what kind of deep brain stimulation therapy devices are available in the market? Is it just one or more companies making it? Are there differences between the company's product or they look about the same? And are those differences meaningful? Is it important to know which is going to, to give what advantages? That's a very, very difficult and long question to answer. Uh, in short, there are three FDA-approved deep brain stimulation therapy or DBS therapy devices available in the market. They have their own name, but we usually simply call them by the company's name, which is offering that device, although the device has its own name. So the one company is Medtronic, the other is Abbott St. Jude or Abbott, and the third one is Boston Scientific. All three are good companies, established companies, and they have a history of offering medical devices. The first deep brain stimulation therapy device was produced or created or designed by Medtronic uh, back in 1960s and 70s by adopting their existing pacemaker platform they were using for cardiac pacemaker. They still are the provider or most often used device in the brain, but in the last few years, uh, within the last three to five years, we have on the market FDA approved two other devices. One of them is Abbott, uh, St. Jude device, and the other one is the Boston Scientific. They have been available in Europe for somewhat longer time, maybe about 10 years or, or, or so, but they have been approved and available in the United States for only a uh, few years, maybe three years or so. And they are being rapidly adopted by many expert centers that do a lot of deep brain simulation surgery. But they are still on the way up and far behind the Medtronic in terms of numbers of cases done with their use. They have a lot of similarities between them. Actually, for an untrained person, an untrained eye, they are almost exactly the same. They have a wire that goes into the brain. They have a connector that runs behind the ear, under the skin, down into the chest, and they have a battery that looks very similar. And if you are not trained, you cannot tell them apart very easily. Uh, that connects with that connector to provide the stimulation to the brain. They need to be programmed. The patient selection is the same. The wire has to be placed in the exact spot, in the exact target. So nothing is different about them. There are minor hardware differences in terms of uh, what the battery sizes are like, is the wire more stretchy or less stretchy, uh, the internal wire design, how the electrical current is carried back and forth, uh, which is of not a huge significance and it only provides minor differences or advantages during the OR surgery, more for the surgeon's ease or convenience. But there are few differences between these devices which are clinically significant and clinically relevant and are important to talk about. Um, in general, uh, one thing to know uh, that the difference if I pick the two top areas will be in the wire design and in the battery design. And then third area I should mention will be how the adjustment is done. So let's talk about them one by one. So let's talk about the wire design itself. The wire that goes into the brain has this tip, which has some nude or open areas. The rest of the wire is silicon, which is inert, does not react with the brain, as far as we know, and does not stimulate the brain. So only those few areas where there is a bare metal, where the electrical current will come out as it is connecting or contacting with the brain tissue. That metal is called contact and there are four contacts on the Medtronic wire that was the first wire design. These contacts are in form of a ring towards the end of the wire and when the current is turned on the whole ring lights up. It doesn't light up but it gives off that electricity that goes into the brain all around it. You can select the contacts one, two, three at a time in various combinations to create a different shape of that electrical current depending on what contact is giving out the electricity. So those Four ring electrodes or ring contacts was the original design. The uh, width of the contact was about 1.5 millimeter and they had about same space between them. So 1.5 millimeter of bare area between the contacts in one lead design. And then they had another lead design which was more compact and the areas were close together. 
the major change that other two companies have brought uh, to the market, first by Abbott and later by Boston Scientific, is to break two of those rings, the middle two rings, into three pieces and make each one separately controllable or a separate contact. So now in the middle two areas, you don't have to stimulate the whole ring, you don't have to turn it on the whole ring, but you can uh, turn on one third of the ring or a third of the area so that the current is stimulated more towards that side of the lead and less towards the other side of the lead which is off. So although the current still is circular, and spreads but the, the circle is not centered in the center of the lead now is more pushed towards one side and that can be valuable if you have a bad area on one side of the wire and a good area on one side and you want the current to go more towards the good area and less towards the bad area then you can only turn on half or one third of the lead or two third of the lead so that's one major update on the deep brain stimulation surgery gives us a little more control on how we stimulate the brain. The second uh, important changes are in the battery design itself. Over the years, the capacity of the battery has improved for all uh, companies. And the current battery uh, is of two types. One is fixed battery, which we call primary cell, but that means that it's a non-rechargeable. So once you place it, you don't have to do anything. It has to charge that can last anywhere from two all the way to five years, depending on the need of the current. And uh, and once it's drained, then you need to replace it. You have to open up the skin, get the battery out, and put a new one in, which is actually not a big surgery. It's, it's a very simple surgery to do, and it's just done under local anesthesia. The whole wiring system does not need to be touched, which, which is a good thing. Um, then there is also what we call a rechargeable battery, where the battery in the in the device can be charged wirelessly without plugging in anything uh, by putting a charger on the top of the skin and it does these uh, induction charges just like these charging mats we have in the new iPhone uh, like iPhone 10 you can place on the mat and in Samsung and other phones um, you can place them on a charging mat and the phone will just charge by the magnetic field created. And that same process can be used to charge the battery here. The battery does need charge often. So either a few minutes once a day, five minutes once a day, a half hour once a week, or more longer every once a month, whatever you decide. Um, and, um, uh, and the battery would then does not need to be replaced for 15 years currently, although the design has the ability to last even longer but it's not testable longer than 15 years reliably. So that's why the label says that after 15 years needs to be replaced, which is an improvement. It used to be nine years and now it's 15 years. So uh, there is uh, some, di some differences between which company has a rechargeable, which company does not have a rechargeable. And then having the battery design, you know, there's a question about once you have the battery placed, can you do an MRI or not? Because remember, MRI is like a magnetic field. So it's like there's induction charges, but much, much more powerful. And can that be done or not done? There are differences in different batteries based on that. The details are beyond the scope of this video, but should be discussed with your neurologist. And the third difference, as I mentioned earlier, is how you interact with the battery. So it used to be that you have to put a, a, a connector on top of the skin to talk with the battery. And now two of the companies have a infrared wireless or radio frequency wireless communicator. So they need something to sit on the battery, but then it connects with the transmitter, either next to the patient or hanging on the shoulder of the patient. And that transmitter would then wirelessly communicate uh, with the programmer, with the device to change the setting. The third company, uh, which is Abbott, has a Bluetooth connection with the battery. So Bluetooth is built into the battery itself. So you don't need anything sitting on the battery anymore and you can connect it with a Bluetooth device. Um, they, of course, they have locked it down, so you cannot connect with all Bluetooth devices in your home, but they have picked the iPhone uh, or iPod Touch as the device to connect with uh, an iPad. So it's basically the uh, Apple uh, operating system or iOS system, and their Bluetooth will connect with the battery and will talk to the battery, 
uh, and of course because of the security reasons there are processes on how to activate that Bluetooth connection and there's a secure connection and only certain devices can access this the only special program that Abbott has can connect with it and so on and so forth so um, they, they, that is somewhat different than the other two devices for the ease or convenience of connection and then within that programmer that that device that we carry as physician to change the setting of the battery uh, of the patient what we call programming there are huge differences which are more technical for for us doing the programming but not so much relevant for the patient uh, although minor difference being that you as a patient will get a limited programmer or controller patient controller which is offered by all three companies but what that controller will look like how it will connect with your device and talk differs between the three because one company is using the Apple system so they have an iPod touch as a controller and I've heard rumors that they might be offering an app that you can download on your iPhone and connect with your battery and have a control for your battery while the others who have specific controllers that you have to buy actually you will get when you get the surgery from them packaged into the overall cost and then you will uh, be able to control it through those controllers and they are working on making, making the design simpler and simpler and there are differences and on that how that controller is designed which again is beyond the scope of this video um, and then physicians uh, way of programming and deciding what settings to use is remarkably different between the three systems and again that's something that's beyond the scope of discussion on this video but it's something to talk to your physician and neurologist about in helping you decide which battery to get placed.